Hello everyone, this video is going to be a walkthrough of the um, ocular and auditory sections as well as the um, operating microscope in the CPT 2022. As always, make sure you have your tabs and your highlighter, and your pen ready to go. If you haven't already, go ahead and put your tab on page 497. I will say I do not find the table of contents for the eye and ocular ad nexus section to be particularly helpful, but for the sake of um, continuity, I always put my tab on um, the table of contents page. So that's where we're at. Um, something I will point out before we even get started is all the codes in this section, as well as in the auditory and operating microscope, are from the 60,000 series. Um, there are also 60,000 series codes in the um, previous section, which was the nervous system. That's right here on the previous page. Um, so why does that matter? The reason why that matters is because on the national exam, you might remember that um, the um, questions are not drawn from each individual chapter. They are drawn from each series. So um, there'll be a certain number of questions from the 50,000 series, the 40,000 series, and of course the 60,000 series, which is what we're looking at. Um, so for the CPC national exam, they currently take six questions from the 60,000 series. So that means only six questions will be derived from the nervous system, ocular, auditory, and operating microscope, okay? So hopefully that relieves a little bit of anxiety because I understand um, obviously eyes are super complicated. Ears are pretty complicated. Um, it's a much smaller area we're working in. Um, very, very specialized. But luckily you will only have six questions from the entirety of um, the 60,000 series. Okay, now that doesn't mean that they won't take um, some questions related to anatomy from these sections. So it is important to know where you have good illustrations. One of them is on the next page on 498. Um, and this shows the different structures of the eye, which is very, very helpful. And not just um, for uh, um, the purpose of anatomy questions, but also when we're looking at the codes themselves, um, this can be very helpful. All right, and then we will get into the actual codes themselves. Um, and there are different sections than you might be used to in the eye and ocular adnexa section. Um, but as you look through it, I think it will make sense um, why they've separated it out this way rather than doing incision, excision, repair, that same pattern that we're used to. Um, when we look at it, we will have one specific anatomical section, such as the eyeball. And then we'll, we will have um, different kinds of procedures underneath. They're just a little bit different than what we've seen before, but I think they make sense. So we have removal of eye for the eyeball, um, secondary implants, that would be implanting something, um, some kind of ocular implant. Um, and then we have removal of foreign body. So that would make sense. A lot of procedures on the eyeball are gonna be taking something out that shouldn't be in there. Uh, maybe that's some gravel or glass or some other kind of thing. Um, and then repair of laceration is also going to be a pretty obvious thing that happens often um, necessitating surgery for eyes. Um, and that is all that is in this specific section. Um, one thing you might want to note in the removal of the eye, it's a little hard for you to see here. So um, you might want to go through, and you see I've already done this on mine, um, and uh, describe or define the different terms for the different removal procedures. And there, this is listed in your textbook and on the PowerPoint, um, or you can just Google it. <laughs> and it explains what the different um, eye removal procedures are because some are more comprehensive than others. All of them are pretty much removing the eyeball itself. Um, but they are also, whether or not we're removing the associated structures, the eyelid, bone, that kind of stuff, um, that 
is how we specify with each different procedure. So I would go ahead and just make a note of it. Um, then we get into the other sections, and this is where our understanding of medical terminology really helps. So anterior is going to be nearer to the front. So in these codes, we are looking at um, procedures that are done nearer to the front of the eye. Again, you can flip back over to this illustration to check out exactly what we're talking about whenever we are looking at these codes, but just to make sure you understand what anterior posterior means. And then we have codes um, for specific structures that are in the anterior section of the eye for the cornea. Um, and then we have the anterior chamber anterior sclera. Make sure you understand where that is because that's going to come up again in a minute. Um, and then the iris. And then we have a catch-all section. Oh, I'm sorry. We also have the lens and the intraocular lens procedures. Okay. And then we have our catch-all section here on 505. And then we have posterior. So we are new anteriors close to the front posterior is closer to the back. And then we look at um, structures that are in the posterior segment of the eye. Um, and why this is important to note is because we remember we had anterior sclera. Now we have the posterior sclera. So a lot of those codes are going to look really similar and they'll probably throw both in if they're trying to trick you on a multiple choice question. Um, so make sure you know exactly which part of the eye you're working in. All right. And then we get into ocular adnexa and ocular adnexa is just the supporting structures. So all the different muscles um, that help support the eye, right? So they're the supportive structures. And then we have procedures on extraocular muscles. So those are muscles outside the eye. Um, and most of these are gonna be the strabismus surgeries. Those are surgeries that are done to um, correct alignment issues of the eye. This is probably where you'll see the bulk of your codes um, from this section. These are very, very common procedures. So anytime you have like cross eyes or um, you have a drifting eye or anything like that, then that's related to the muscle. That's when you'll do these procedures, okay? All right. And then we have codes for the orbit and the eyelid. The conjunctiva. And that includes the lacrimal system. And if you are unfamiliar with what that is, that's kind of the corner of the eye here. And then um, there's an illustration right here. And then there's a structure right underneath the skin here, and then actually above the eyelid, there is a gland, a lacrimal gland, okay? And that is what we're talking about when we're talking about the lacrimal system. And they have that same um, familiar pattern, incision, excision, repair. And on the next page, 514, there's another illustration that could be helpful there. So you can kind of more fully, whoop, it's a little bright there. And kind of more fully see what we're talking about when we talk about the lacrimal system. And then we get into the auditory system. And then at the very, very end is where we have the operating microscope section, okay? Um, so for the auditory system, we're talking about the ear. Uh, this is another really good um, illustration. You can see I have a tab here, so you may want to do that as well. Um, again, that's the only reason I got one of my questions right on the national exam is because I knew where to see, find an illustration. Um, and this section is going to follow uh, that similar pattern that we're used to. We're going to get to incision, excision, removal, repair, um, and other procedures. And all that's going to um, help us specify is the location. So here we do external ear, middle ear, inner ear, and then temporal bone. Um, and that's all we have for this whole section, okay? So that pattern is going to repeat itself where we have our external ear, incision, excision, removal, repair, and other. And remember, whenever we have an other's procedure inside a subsection, it's only going to be procedures for that subsection. So only 
um, external ear, other procedures are covered here. And if you even want to specify it, that's totally fine too. Then we have the same pattern for middle ear and inner ear, and then temporal bone. And one thing I wanted to point out here, actually, there's a little bit of guidance here for osseo integrated implants. And I just wanted to kind of point out that anytime you see osseo, in case you've forgotten your medical terminology, that means bone. So these are implants that are involving the bone. In this particular circumstance, we're talking about um, implants into the skull. So those are for like hearing devices um, that are implanted. So there's some good guidance there, but also you might wanna make a note that osseo means bone. Um, and then we get into operating microscope, and that is just one code. That's its own section, but it's just one code. And you'll notice that it is an add-on code. So that means it cannot be used by itself. It needs to be used in conjunction with another pr primary procedure code. Um, and it's just to specify that that procedure was done by operating microscope. Um, make sure that you read through the guidance. If you are ever going to use this code, I would read through the guidance every time you use it just to make sure you know exactly why you're doing it, okay? But it is just the one code, so that's all you've got to know, okay? And that is it for the walkthrough. Um, like I said, pretty small section um, for the national exam. Uh, maximum that you'd have from those sections uh, would be six questions, um, but probably much less than that because you'd also want to get some nervous system questions in there, and that's probably going to be their focus. Um, but, you know, just good to know the flow of it, good to understand what little things might make it a little bit different. If you do have questions or concerns, please feel free to post them and we can talk through those together. Thank you.